Okay, we're live. Hi. <laughs> I need to come up with something new to say instead of, I don't know. Anyways, happy Dappy Tuesday. We're in the kitchen trying to show our Mexican hot chocolate. And you tell, tell them I, about I guess, it. Super I fast. guess everybody um, just went crazy over it when they saw we were serving it at the wedding. Um, which, by the way, the wedding was so great. We worked so hard on that. And we love it. We love them so much. Well, you've been asked a lot now if you're a catering company. But no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have time for catering, too. <laughs> oh, man. I don't think we um, have time for catering. but Because that took a long time to plan and, and pull together. But no, we're not catering. <laughs> but the wedding was amazing. So the Mexican hot chocolate, she came up with the idea well, to serve it in the beginning. Oh, yes. Oh, in the beginning of yeah, the Yeah, the beginning right. of the wedding. And then it was fun because a lot of them after wanted it with like their cake as well I, we got to get in both of these they wanted it with their cake too so it did turn um, out really everybody fun. said I it was such a beautiful wedding the new aprons are just on point we're going to talk about that in yeah. just a second yeah. mine was the black one by the way that you couldn't really see with my dress and I have to tell you, I haven't washed it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Lizzie, put it on. And she said, I can't. It's filthy. She washed hers, but we're going to talk about that too. But anyway, so we keep going with the Mexican them. hot we chocolate for a second. So, so we're going to talk about this. <laughs> yeah, in just a second. So the Mexican hot chocolate is super fun. It's, I don't know, I just think it's winter time. It's all about holiday time. But you can, use, you can do it any time of year. We just thought it was so great to serve to people as they came in, you know, when people come a little early. It ended up that we served it before the wedding, and then we also were serving it during dessert time. Yeah. Because a lot of people who had tasted it or who hadn't said, oh, that's good. Maybe I want some more of that. Uh, I think a lot of people didn't try it, um, too, because I don't know, when they see all the whipping cream, I think, Maybe they think it's too fattening. I'm not sure. No, after they then heard that it was so good, everybody was trying to... Right, right. Everybody said, go vote. Yes, today, go and vote. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going right in a, just a little bit. Go vote today. Yes, great reminder. Go Thank vote. Thank you. Absolutely. Everybody needs to vote. That's one of our rights here in our country, and how lucky are we that we can just run down to our little district and vote. I know. It's special. It is special. It's so special to You know what's fun about it is our brother our oldest brother ran um he was the sheriff of summit county up here and he ran twice right you go three, two, or, three times or three yeah. times yeah, i don't know and anyways <laughs> when you really get involved with oh, that it's fun. it is fun like yeah. we were knocking doors and putting signs everywhere oh. and throwing things it was so fun we so worked it's so fun hard. to be a part of that yeah, it's so and he fun. won every time it was super fun <laughs> I think right. they were like, you guys are crazy. Okay, <laughs> we're going to get into our, but look, I just pulled out more Kamu bread for this morning. My kid actually wanted me to serve him, uh, I mean, serve him, make him lunch for today. And I said, oh no, buddy, we're out of bread. And he was like, well then, I'm not taking a sandwich today. He was like, I only want the Kamu bread. So I hurried and whipped this up this morning. Looks and so good. And I'll put them in the bags. Oh, I keep dropping it. I'll put them in the bags and then and freeze them so they're the perfect size we love the minis so just so you know the Kamut recipe makes six little mini loaves and I just think they're the best they're the perfect too. size and they just stay fresh they do they just I don't know you go through them a little faster but you're just pulling them out and it's they're fresh. so fresh I love the size I love how it looks I love everything about this. They're perfection. Yeah. So that was fun. So I heard and whipped up that this morning too because my kids just love the Kamu bread. We're obsessed with the, the most, Kamu bread. The most delicious bread you'll ever eat. Okay. Okay, whoops. Um, do you cut before freezing? No. No. So do you want me to show you the bread bags really fast? I guess I'll do that. Yeah. And the pan too. So these are Lizzie's minis. And um, they're just they're just like mine. You can find them around different places. They're about six and six by three and a half is what they are, and that's the perfect size. So we have this store in Utah called Orsin Geeky. I just like ran, but they've got great kitchen stuff like in supply. So they have these bread bags. Uh, what size are these, Mom? And um, they're seventeen and a half, I believe. 
So we buy these, there's like, what, a thousand in a bag. So if you wanted to split it up with somebody or it's gonna last you a really long time, we just put this and then put the, once they're cool, put them in, put the Ikea clip on it, the clips that we love, and stick them in the freezer. Yeah. Or in the fridge, either way, or out on your counter, but we freeze them. But you need to freeze them because obviously you're not gonna eat them all at once. No. Unless you're taking them to somebody or you're gonna have a big party. And it keeps it so super it, they, fresh. It's perfect in the freezer up to three to four months. And it's, you won't, believe me, it won't last more than a week. No, we need to link our bread pans. Mine, she, her, hers are from Sir Latab, and then mine are just Baker's Secret that I got at Orson Gigi. So hers are a little fancier, but mine are turning out great too. No, they're right. Yeah, it's, it's all about the size. Okay, after the video, we'll talk about the aprons and um, the portion control. We're gonna talk about that, but we're gonna get right into the hot chocolate. Hot chocolate, so, so you for can those watch of you, it. For those of you who are tuning in for the recipe, let's, let's get it going. Yes, we freeze them in these bags, yes. And it's perfect. You freeze them in these bags. It's amazing. Okay. Um, you can also use Ziploc. Yeah, and you, you can just let Ziploc. it thaw. If you let it sit out on your counter. It'll be thawed in an hour. Right, super fast. How do you slice them perfectly for sandwiches? So just show that, Lizzie. Um, we're, well, wait, let me get your bread knife. First of all, you need... Oh, hi, Hottie from Mexico. Oh my goodness. The hot chocolate was legit. Oh. Oh, we love you guys. Have the best Mexico time. They're in Mexico on their wedding. Or on their wedding. On their honeymoon. Have the best time. Wish oh, we were there. Such a beautiful bride. We're forgetting about this camera. Okay, so Such a beautiful couple. So everybody, you need a very good um, bread knife. This one is Wushkoff. Um, there are many good bread knives, but that's something. That is something. her favorite knife brand. Yeah, it is. Um, is it not? It's it. It is. You told me it was. No, it is. It is. <laughs> What's the favorite. other one that's your favorite? Well, there's Globo from Japan. Um, there's also another one from Germany, um, and it's it's got two names. Anyway, it, it won't come to me right this second. But this is the main one that I buy. But you need a good, a really good bread knife, and we'll show you how great this cuts. Okay, let me just show this. So we'll cut. Can you, Lizzie, can they see this? Let me fix it. Yes. Okay, so so we'll just cut the end off just like that, okay? And of course, eat it, don't waste it. And then for the sandwich, now these are still warm, mind you, and look how this knife is cutting right through warm bread. She just took this out. So of course you'd let it cool. So that's about, that's about perfect, just like that. Can you see it? You can see how still warm it is. Oh, it's so delicious. It's so good. It's so good. So a perfect cut, okay? Get yourself a good bread knife Bread knife if you don't have them. You won't be able to cut your bread. Okay. Super oh, good. Whoa. Okay, can you reuse the bags that the market type uh, bread, that the market type bread come in? Oh, oh, yeah. Why not? Yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's a good thought. That is a great thought. That's a great idea. Okay, that size is perfect for a sandwich. It is. It is the perfect size. Especially, we'll get into portion control, but we can't eat a sandwich with a little bit of chips. So this without is why... Without a little I bit mean, of chips. I mean, without. Right. <laughs> Sorry. And that's why this sandwich is so perfect because you're not eating a massive sandwich then with the chips it's and everything. It's also filling. It, it really is. It's it really is. It's also filling. Okay. It's the perfect size sandwich for lunch. For lunch. Now, if that were dinner, no. That okay. would not be enough for dinner. No. Okay. okay. Let's get okay. going with this. So let's get going. So First, you need to know that you need this chocolate. This is from Trader Joe's. Look at this. It's the... It's um, it's the Trader Joe's. Well, it's imported from Belgium. Wow. We're talking about Belgium today. We're yeah. talking about Belgium linen yeah. and Belgium chocolate. One of our favorite places, by the way. Right. Um, so imported from Belgium, Trader Joe's milk chocolate. So this recipe calls for milk chocolate chocolate if you don't live near a trader joe's just get yourself some good milk chocolate and yes hershey's is fine guitar is fine ghirardelli's is fine any kind of milk chocolate but i really believe that this is what makes our, the, the hot chocolate i i know i, I makes believe it. it's this no it's, it does it's incredible it's not cheap 
Um, we went through, I, I don't even know how many of these for the wedding. Um, I think I had 15 that, right, at least. <laughs> anyway, it was, it was. But amazing. this is the best, so you need this. Everybody loves Trader Joe's. Everybody knows about it. So, okay. So we're going to use half, right? Yeah. For the so recipe. So half, so this recipe, it doesn't make that much. It, I say six, it makes enough for six, and that's not a And this a was already broken glass. in half. Yeah, so that one was already broken in half. Wow, that's great. That's amazing. Perfect. So we didn't have to break it. <laughs> okay, so in order in order given, um, Lizzie, let's show them how to do this in, okay. in the order given. Go ahead and add, well here, I'll pour it for you. So here's, um, here's two. Here, let we me need this three one. cups, whoops. So we need three cups of milk. We're actually using 1% here. You can use one or 2%. Some people, some people want, like to use whole. Um, I wouldn't because we're actually adding cream. Now Lizzie, go ahead and add one cup of cream. I love the cream from Costco. It it's, is super this good. This Dairy Gold, it's amazing cream. We went through so many of okay, those. Okay, so one cup of cream. Okay. And now, so we have our milk, we have our one cup of cream. The recipe that we're going to post in just a minute says three cups of milk and then two cups of heavy whipping cream divided. So one cup is going in here, then you're going to whip the other cup because we put a really nice amount on top when we serve it of whipped cream. Okay, so now we need eight ounces of Trader Joe's. This is actually 17.6, but we just divided it. We, we use a little more than eight. Yeah. Because we're just using half of that. So. Because it's just next, easier. Yes. <laughs> next, we're adding our chocolate, and I like to just um, crack it right here on top of your countertop so that it will um, so we'll put these pieces in, so can even make a few more pieces than that. So how many servings? This is for six cups, right? Yes, and, it, and these are not large servings, so we'll, we'll show you. This is not the hot chocolate that she drinks every morning. Oh a my goodness. A lot of you are like, is this the one that you... <laughs> I was asked that so many times at the wedding. We're going to show and that again sometime, but no, no, no. No, I would never drink this, this is every so, morning. <laughs> this is a treat. This yes. is a real, real, real treat. This is a treat. Okay. No. Okay, cream like heavy whipping cream. Yes. yes. And yes. And and it says heavy whipping cream on It tells you that on exactly on our recipe. Okay? Now we're going to continue to stir. And if you're you need to be stirring this over low to medium heat because you can burn it. You will burn and the chocolate. So be so careful. Don't turn your heat up too high. We're gonna add one teaspoon of vanilla. This is our Mexican vanilla, Adi, <laughs> Ashley. <laughs> From but Mexico. you have get said, yourself some of this. You have said that if you can't get Mexico, um, I Mexican, love Trader then Joe's. You love the Trader Joe's. I love the Trader That's Joe's. That's what she's it's now been price. saying. She's like, it's a good one. Yeah, it's a good price. I'm buying this in Mexico for, I think it's seven dollars. It's and it's fabulous, um, vanilla. We stock up when we go. Yeah. Okay. So one teaspoon of that vanilla. and the copper. <laughs> Oh, yes. One, I got to get back there to get me more copper because they have the most incredible copper. Okay, what's the difference between imitation vanilla and real extract? The quality. It's the quality and the taste. It's just like our lemon um, flavored extract. The pure is night and day over the fake. Um, now, you mean coconut? Well, lem well, well lemon, that too. Uh, all of but them. All of lemon, them. Lemon, coconut, right, butter, right. Uh, everything. The butter extract. But this it's is not the real thing. The thing is, if you're on a budget, like we talked about last week, the imitation is fine. Right. I've used it throughout my life. I'm not going to say that I have not used imitation vanilla. In fact, that's what I grew up with. Um, we didn't have the real vanilla in my home when I grew up. It was always imitation. Okay, Facebook is asking, what are you making? So one, I'm making Mexican hot chocolate. This is a treat for the holidays coming up. Um, you can serve this at any party. Serve it for dessert to your family. 
No joke, everybody at the party said, that is the best hot chocolate I have ever had. They said that. Lindsay, if you're on here, you know what I'm talking about. She like could not get enough. Joey, she had like Joey four cups. could not stop. No, they like had four cups. He, it's so yummy. He could not stop. One cinnamon stick, so we'll put that in. It's gonna add, going to add a lot of flavor. Um, now, one fourth teaspoon of cayenne. So, um, it's right here. Mm, sorry. Oh goodness! I just used it last yeah. night. Okay, for the chili, for the white chili. So, and somebody was saying, how do you cut down the spice in the white chili? Well, you just wouldn't add the cayenne. So go easy on the cayenne. Um, but you can add up to one fourth teaspoon to your liking. And honestly, kids were drinking this, so if you go so we, light enough, it, the we, the kids love it. We it didn't wasn't add too much. much. We didn't add too much. So go easy on the cayenne for your liking. Okay, this is starting to melt and we we it turn it down. Good. Yeah, turn it down a little, Lizzie. And we don't want this to boil. The recipe says, I wrote the recipe. Um, turn the, let's see, heat until hot, not boiling, stirring often with a wooden spoon. Turn the heat off. Be careful not to scorch the chocolate. Keep the heat very low. The, melt, the chocolate melts it so fast, yeah. it's done. Yeah, well this is this induction it's, thing This induction is, cooker is, is incredible. Amazing. Anyway, okay. So now we're not going to let it boil. We're just literally going to pour. Should I just turn it off? Yeah, just unplug it. Okay, so like she said, you're then using the other half, I mean the other cup, to whip up whipped cream. And a tip, if you Where's don't know this, Hold on, I think I used it for my soup okay, last night. Okay, just a second. Okay, so another tip, if you don't know this, which I'm sure most of you do, but if you put a bowl of ice and then put this on top of it, yeah. this will keep good for a full day. A full day. Right? Like yeah. a full day. If you keep this on ice, it will last for a full day. It will stay just the way that you want it. I've actually kept it overnight even, yeah. and the next day it's still good. Okay. So what we've done is we've whipped this cream and we've sprinkled ground cinnamon right on top so this is how you would but you're adding it. a little bit of sugar and a little bit of, of vanilla. vanilla to your liking right about a half a teaspoon of vanilla to one cup and a little bit of sugar and so then just get a cute little bowl and put it next to wherever your cups are going to be and now Lizzie go ahead and ladle some okay. um, hot chocolate in there it's so amazing Whoops, it just kind of got it on the side. Should I put more? Just a little more. Okay, so some, Let me get some of you may have larger cups, which is fine. These are, I think these are perfect. These are my, my favorite. Um, Sorry. My favorite cups in the world. They really are. It's for that hot chocolate. Brand from I have, Anthropology. Yeah, I have some other ones at home that I like to show when we finally move over back to my house. In my kitchen, it's almost completely done. I'm gonna have them. We're, we're, I can't wait to take everybody over there to show you in um, probably maybe next week, even. We'll see. I can't get it to stay. I'm okay. Sorry. So now we have the hot chocolate and. We'll just take... It's going to be posted on our website right after this. I'll do a story for it. We'll just take about a tablespoon of this beautiful cinnamon cream. Put a little more on and... You guys, it's so good. It is Here, so Lizzie, good. Taste it. Um, okay, it's... they said, is it ground or powdered sugar? It's ground. Ground sugar for the, um, for the whipped cream. Mm. It's, it's nothing like you've ever had before. I don't know, maybe they've had a Mexican hot chocolate, but it's the best one that I've ever had. You're like, you can't even really taste the cayenne either. It just gives a little bit of a something. Don't it's put the one, all of the one fourth teaspoon don't. in without testing at first. Make sure, yeah, make sure to totally test. Sometimes when we make oh, it, it's people so say yummy. more, more cayenne, more cayenne. And other people are like, no, not more. Yeah. It's, Perfect. It's so good. You guys, it's the perfect thing for the holidays. Make it for your Thanksgiving, Christmas, everything. Christmas Eve, sitting up, sitting by the fire with this. With some cinnamon rolls or... <laughs> with some 
Even wow. kamut bread right oh. now. Even kamut bread. Oh, it's yeah. incredible. So we'll post the recipe right too. after this. We'll post the recipe. But, okay, we don't want to go super long, but we want to talk about so portion good. control. It's something that a lot of you have been asking, so you can make sure to ask your questions on this as well. But you started off. Um, people want to know what we mean by portion control because that's all part of the food nanny lifestyle, mm -hmm. what we've been living for over 40 years now. And basically, um, portion control is putting, dishing your food up yourself and not putting large amounts of food on your plate to begin with. And then literally pushing your plate back when you're satisfied. Not stuffed or full. When you're satisfied. Go with a nice helping of potatoes, but not two and three scoops. A nice scoop of potatoes, um, a smaller piece of meat, more vegetables, more greens, more, you know, salad, a piece of bread, if you're having bread, um, not two and three and four. So it all boils down to this. Everybody is different. Everybody's going to take in a different amount. When you're satisfied is when you just push your plate back. And you don't have any more. And you know you, you have a little bit of room left for dessert. So that's the whole key. Um, and it's all about, it's all different for you. But most of the time, what the, a question that you get asked a lot and I get asked is um, when we're on vacation and different things like that or when we go out for lunch, are you eating the full cheeseburger? Like we were going and getting a hamburger and french fries. We don't do that for lunchtime, but unless it's like a little McDonald's or, a, or an in and out, or an in -and -out or because an in -and -out. those ones are little, right? but which you guys might hate McDonald's for saying that, but that's a little hamburger. But most of the time, if it's a massive hamburger, if five guys, where else do we like to go? Um, for hamburgers? Yeah, I'm trying to think. Well, in and out five guys, McDonald's. Um, well, I'm saying like for dinner time. A little one, but dinner. But, but anyway, so there's times in the day, especially for lunch, that we're splitting our sandwich. Like we like to go to Jimmy John's all the time. We never eat a full sandwich from there. We see Because it. we die for chips with our sandwich. It's something that we have to have. We like a crunch with our sandwich. If we go to Neaters, we um, split the sandwich. Yeah, if we're at Neaters, we're splitting a sandwich. Um, if we're at Chick-fil-A, we're getting the kids' meal. The kids' meal. meal, right. So it's McDonald's, like... McDonald's, the kids' meal. Right. Um, I grew up, you know, McDonald's was one of the only things around that and Dairy Queen and Tasty Freeze. So I still like McDonald's. Um, different times. Not very much, but sometimes I think, I, I want a McDonald's filet of fish. I'm hungry for it. And their hamburgers are so small. Um, it, we don't hate it. We don't need to justify don't it. it. It's like Jim Gaffigan on the McDonald's thing, that they sell a million hamburgers. <laughs> but nobody's saying they But nobody it. admits that they go. We, <laughs> we will admit that we like a McDonald's hamburger. That doesn't mean that we don't know good food and that our recipes are not good, but whatever. Yeah. But, okay, we have some questions coming in, which will be good. So how often do you have desserts trying to change family eating habits? Um, we... In, in I my think that's books, a little different for me. <laughs> in my books, um, I explain to you as we, as I teach you how to do the meal plan, that when the kids were all growing up, I did one planned dessert a week. Did that mean I never made cookies or a brownie the rest of the time? No, and I explain that in my book. But one planned dessert a week I did, which might be a cake. Now we were having a lot of birthdays, so we had a lot of cakes in and out, but it might be a cake for a planned dessert. Any kind of cake. Lizzie, this one that you just made. Um, I last tried to night. show it last night, but that's our. It um, was too dark. What's the name of this that's one? That's the Graham yeah, Strusel cake. The Graham it's Strusel cake. So good. It's, in book two, so yummy. Um, that one's amazing, but it might be a cake. It might be a pie. It might be a cobbler. It might be brownies. Maybe I'm icing the brownies that night. It might be chocolate malts. Um, it might be sugar cookies. Um, it might be Rice Krispie treats. Oh, but my Rice Krispie treats but are amazing. But a planned dessert is what I did. 
Now, I usually made a batch of cookies every day because when the kids came home from school, they needed, they were hungry for something. And so I usually had homemade cookies and a couple of cookies was satisfying with a glass of milk. And so that kept them, you know, sitting down at the table doing their homework while the smells were coming from the kitchen with dinner that was going to be served um, by 5.30. And they were getting home around 3.30-ish. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that, was, that was how we did it. Um, so I'm super into treats, but keep going. You can keep no, going. No, go ahead. But I am super, super into treats. I've got a sweet tooth like no other. I, so do I. Amy, my sister Amy and I said we need to go into like sugar rehab maybe because <laughs> we have a serious problem. But when, um, we'll answer the question on this. She said, so how much snacking? What I have tried to do is exactly what my mom has taught me. We try to have a smaller breakfast and try not to really snack before lunch time. Right. Well, we don't. We don't. But sometimes if you're dying, sometimes if you're pregnant, obviously I did right. never use that right. rule if I was right. pregnant. Right. But most of the time we try to get us satisfied in the morning that we are we're holding off until lunchtime. Then when lunchtime rolls around, we're eating a good lunch that we're gonna feel full, satisfied, satisfied. right? Not like sick to our stomachs. Satisfied. But then every single day for me around two o'clock, three o'clock, I've gotta have a cookie. Sometimes it's immediately right after the lunch, and then yes. and, and then and then, then I'm then I'm then trying to good. hold off you're and be good, good until dinner until dinner time. Because what it is is that it's not that we're trying to starve ourselves or oh, that no. we're trying to not have, um, you know, like just these tiny tiny portions. No, we're eating a good amount. But what it is is that dinner time is the most important part of the day. So if you are not hungry for dinner. That's not good. That's not good. Because you're not going to cook it. You're not going to cook. Your kids are going to, um, they're going to not have, whatever. Well, they, fend, they end up fending they, for themselves. I, I lose my words on here sometimes, but they're going to not benefit from the yummy dinner time. Your husband's not going to benefit. So you need to be hungry for dinner. That is our main stitch. That's why we talk about it. That's why we show you most of our meals and everything are about dinner time. That is our thing. Because this is where the family comes together at the end of the day to sort out and talk over the day around the table. Right. And many of you say, oh, but I can't get everybody home. You cook for who is home. And when the others come in, whether it's an hour or two hours or three hours later, you have their plate waiting for them. Right. And you can zap it in the microwave or you can heat it back up in the oven or what, depending on what it is, you can reheat it on top of the stove. I just always And that's make the, the beauty of it. Yes. Because when your kids know that there is food there waiting for them, it's like she has said, and even the studies that you've read, right. the kids come home. The kids want to be home. They don't want to be out with friends. Um, you read that one study from where? Columbia from University. From Columbia University that said if you have dinner on the table, your kids are going to want to be home, not be with friends, that are going to likely be doing drugs or alcohol or other crazy things that they would be doing because they know that they're needed at home. And all they're going to be eating is, is a fast taco or a fast burger and you can't live on tacos and burgers. No. You don't get your vegetables. You don't get a properly nutrition, a, a nutritional meal on a regular basis with a variety of food. And that is key to being satisfied. And that is key to a healthy existence. Diet. Healthy diet. A healthy diet. Right. That is key. It's the variety. And your body starts craving. When you start to make your meal plan, your body will tell you, oh my goodness, I'm so hungry for some broccoli. I'm so hungry for some asparagus. And your kids will so, tell you. Yes. Get your kids involved. Help them choose the meals because that makes them even more excited for dinner time. They get their favorites. And then they're like, I'm craving spaghetti, mom. You, it was so funny because each one of her kids, she had seven kids, each one of us would be at school and no joke, I was dreaming about dinner, dinner time. And my husband still tells me it's a little bit of like a problem <laughs> because I still do the same thing. We dream about it. Like yesterday when I was thinking about all the dinners for this week, I'm like, this yes, is a good week. This is, this a, is a great week. week. <laughs> like every night I'm going to be eating so yummy. And that is, it's like your body starts to crave it. You get so excited for it. And then you get excited to cook too. 
Yeah. I think when you when you create the kitchen, which is the most important hot room in your home, when you make it nice and cozy and kitchen art and all the fun things that Where we talk about love and all the love and all the yummy recipes are coming from it, you get excited about it and your kids get excited about it. And that's why we get so emotional and passionate about it because it's it's a great lifestyle. And okay, sorry, you yeah, can keep no, going, go but there's and more your questions. your kids will behave when you're in the kitchen cooking dinner because those smells coming from the oven, they're going to be so excited to sit around the table. Um, I had a dear, dear, dear close, close friend. Her name was Jill. And um, I actually met her uh, the very first time when I was on Good Things Utah. We had a little contest. And the seventh person that called in won me for the afternoon. And I went to their home and I helped them make a meal plan and helped them put dinner on the table for, your, for their family. And this beautiful darling girl called in because the night before she had picked Tommy up from school. And Tommy said, she, he said, I had something so amazing happen to me at school today. And Jill said, well, what? Tell us. And she said, just a minute, I'll get the other kids. Because she went to one school, and then she went to the other and picked the other two up. And then the other kids got in the car, and Tommy said, no. He said, I'm going to tell everyone tonight at dinner when Dad's home. And she's thinking, dinner? I haven't made dinner in two weeks. Like, mm -hmm. sit around the table, Tommy? Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah. And she's like, oh my gosh, I had no idea that dinner meant this much to you. So she was in a total panic. What was she going to cook? She had no idea what she was going to make because they were just, they'd made something over the weekend that she still had some leftovers on or get a sandwich or fry some eggs or make some nuggets, whatever it is, call in some pizza. And she panicked. And I happened to be on Good Things Utah. She won it. And I went to her house, and it was the most, one of the, it was my first. You one guys, the most, there's an incredible buck coming right up to my Oh, my door. word. You should see it. You should go show it, Lizzie. We you have should. a buck friend. He's our best friend. Sorry. It's a deer. Sorry to interrupt. It's a deer it's coming a, right up to it's Lizzie's a buck window. That he loves us. He loves our voices. It's almost like we call him to it's, the window. It's crazy. Lizzie, he's not afraid of this. us. Okay, keep well, going. Let me, like, let me finish this. Sorry. And so Jill, um, Jill passed. This beautiful, beautiful young woman in her 40s oh, wow. um, got stomach cancer. And I happened to have been in Germany for 18 months at the time. And I never got word of it. And when I got home and was trying to get a hold of her, I, I found out what had happened. And I, I cannot tell you. Wow, this girl, this this beautiful, beautiful girl was left a legacy. Yeah, left a legacy behind a massive legacy. Yeah, um, and tragic wasn't even the word, but she started cooking for her family after that, and she had a good five or six years of cooking meals for her family, mm -hmm. and the kids are still living on on those memories today, and her husband. A crazy story, but anyway, that's a good story. Um, Okay, take a few bites and let your body and brain tell each other. It takes time for um, the satisfaction to register. Exactly. Exactly. It's like called intuitive eating. Yes. That is exactly and, it. And our main deal about lunch is we, we're, never going to over, we're never going to get full at lunch because if we do, we won't be hungry to cook dinner. And that's where our, our meal plan comes in. This is where our portion control comes in. Um, is, is most importantly for every meal, yes, but especially lunch, or you won't be hungry to cook. And you all know that. You all know that when you go out to a big lunch with your friends, the last thing you want to do right. is come home. Okay, you said to make sure kids have smaller portions and to make their kids eat everything on their plate. No, I never said Wait, that. You said make sure kids having smaller portions... And no. not to make the kids eat everything yes. on their plate. Yes, that's exactly what I said. And I can't is, read the Reddit. And this is what you do. Your children need to dish up their own food. Because they need to know that it's not nice manners. And it's not appropriate to take four helpings of potatoes at the first serving. Because they're... Number one, there might not be enough to go around. Right. And number two, it's ridiculous. And this is how people learn to overeat. 
is their stomachs, they're starving. Their stomachs are, are their mind is much bigger than their stomach. Right. And so what we need to do is teach our kids, dish up your own food, serve your food family style or buffet on your bar or, or just on your table, on your countertop, however you want. But make sure you sit around the table and eat. And not some at the bar and some at the table and some on the couch, no. Everybody's sitting together around the table. This is where you communicate. This is where you share your stories. But the kids need to, to get, dish up their own food and you need to, as, your, as their parent, as their caretaker, you need to say, honey, not so much. You dish up a little bit. My mom and dad taught me this, very young. You dish up a little bit first. And then if you want more, if you're still have, hungry, yes. If you're still hungry, yes. have a little more. Yes. But don't get stuffed. No. Nobody likes that feeling. And we don't want our kids to, to get used to that feeling. Right. Because we want them to grow up never being stuffed. Maybe at Thanksgiving or Christmas, we get stuffed. Let's and be guess realistic. what? I'm going to be realist for a second. I do make myself Full, sometimes physically sick. We all I ate do. so much cake we last night that I made yes. myself sick. Yes. So we do say this, and yes, but we're not perfect. It's the rules. And these right. are the rules and the whole thing, but we are not perfect. Oh, another rule is, is talking about our Kamut bread, is we actually tried to eat bread only twice a day. Right. That was something that she taught me for right. Go too. Okay, we want to we want to go through some of their questions. Something you two said a while back was that um, you freeze everything. I make your treats. I leave enough of one or two per person and kid, and then stick the rest in the freezer Perfect. that way. Exactly. Exactly. Everything stays in the freezer, so fresh and good. A girl said to me, uh, uh, talking about the wedding, she said, "How did you really make those ten cakes with every single thing that you're doing?" Well, on the one cake, you can freeze it. The strawberries and cream cake, you can freeze that. And most of the other ones you can, but the chocolate ganache, you can't because you need to put the ganache those, on while it's hot. Yes, those but, Lizzie was smart. She started over a week early. Right. She knew she would have to Right. in order to make 10 cakes. She knew she would My have to start crazy. a week and a half early. The minute she got back from Hawaii, she started baking. Right. And she's very smart about how she did it. It takes a long time and it takes a lot of organization to be able to do that because nobody's freezer is either, unless you've got another bigger freezer right. out in the garage, nobody's freezer is big enough to hold that many cakes. So she had to use her family's freezers. She had to drive and come back and drive and come back. And then she had to go run around and pick them all up again so that she could get them all frosted. And it's a, it was a labor of love. It was a ton of work. It was a labor of love, but it can be done, especially for those. And especially, I'm not love. kidding, you can freeze everything, and it yeah. takes amazing. Cookies in a cookie jar, if you are still doing something like that, no. No, 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 no. no. They Who don't stay fresh. They when, don't stay fresh. You, you know, when, when I was a kid, the big thing was, who had the cutest cookie jar? And, and when I think back about those cookie jars, Oh, oh my goodness, they weren't that cute. They weren't that cute nowadays. Okay. But anyway, going. I know. But anyway, we have to hurry. But but we did. We put our cookies in the cookie jar. And after a day, they just weren't that good. And finally, we figured it out. Put them in the freezer. We figured this out about 30 years ago. Yeah. Put them in the freezer. Right. Okay, um, let's mention and Pull our it out. Okay, but somebody <laughs> just said, the longer I follow your meal plan, my body tells me what it wants. Like I exactly. start to crave certain foods on certain days, and I also begin um, and not need to eat as much as I used to. I started November 2017. Well, that's wow. amazing. Well, I say to everyone, if you are a grazer, you're taking in more calories than you ever imagined. Yes. And you 100%. never... 100%. And you don't know what it's like to be hungry. Because when you graze, you top your tummy off. And that's not what you want. You want to be hungry for lunch, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Right. You want to be hungry. And you want to feel satisfied. Like, they're, like with the whole weight thing that we've been talking about and we'll keep talking about forever, there's just too many girls that feel like they can't even enjoy food, food or a meal because they, they can't eat that much or it's too many calories or whatever. But, but they, really, they're doing a disservice. Yes, because what you've done is you're getting your set point totally off. 
When you eat normal meals, your set point comes back and finds what it is. Everybody is different, but everyone I will needs never to be find... able to be as tiny as her. And a lot of you probably think that I might eat more than her. <laughs> no, you don't. No, mom, You're... it's true. I'm yes, not meaning but... that in a bad way. But, I have to say but that. everybody is different. But I we are different. A lot shorter. Shorter, I'm... and she has genetic and, on the and legs. And whatever. But it, it doesn't I have matter. A butt. It's all about it's all about how you feel, and it doesn't matter what size you no, are or how much you weigh. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. I'm not trying to say that it doesn't. No. I'm just trying to say that even though you you're still going to be different body types, even if we, you and I were eating the exact same portion, exact same everything. If I copied her all day long, I would not look the same. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. But I'm good for Every, me. Right. I'm good for me. Right. She's good for her. Whatever. And you're okay. good for you. And you're good for you. It's not about the size or any of that it's about feeling good it's about feeling good okay my problem is portion control with sweets once I start a cookie I have six yes I've had your problem before Amy yeah. can, can you relate. need to have two you yeah you need to just try to stop it too put the rest in a baggie and put them in the put freezer them out of sight. because this is another thing bake your sweets on a consistent basis when you starve yourself of it, you then binge. indulge and binge like crazy. And that's probably because you're not allowing yourself to eat cookies a lot. That's probably maybe your problem. Maybe it's not. But I know that for me, yes, when I'm trying to lose weight, that's a whole different thing. We that's try a whole to cut, different thing. That's a whole you different have to thing. cut out sweets. But if you're trying to lose weight, you have to cut out sweets and bread. Right. But if you do not make treats on a con like you know regularly and you're starving yourself of a cookie... I do the same thing. If I then get cookies in front of my face, I'm going to eat six of them because I'm starving. The funny thing is, it's just like what I told you about with kids. If you have candy that's around all the time, your kids eventually won't even really want the candy. My kids haven't even gone crazy over their Halloween candy, and it's not even a joke. It's because they're allowed to have it when they want to have it. It's not like, oh, once a year, you get to pick your candy for the year. You better enjoy it. It's like, no, they know they can have it when they want to have it. And that's the same with cookies and cake and everything. Nobody's then in Indulging so much right. because they know that it's going to be there tomorrow. It's just like your, and it's going to be there the next day. Yes, and it's just like a good dinner. You make this exactly. fabulous dinner for your husband, exactly, and, and you only make it once every two weeks. He's going to stuff. Himself. He will be so physically sick because he's going to be like, "When am I going to have this again?" So, you guys, it really is a rule of thumb. Okay, I you I don't know. There's so much more. It's so true. The kids are the one that suffer when. When you as adults aren't hungry for dinner, love this advice. Conversations that happen at the dinner table are priceless. They really, really are. And we have conversation okay. starters in our cookbooks. You guys, and there's so much. So much I'm so sorry. Cookbooks. Okay. We don't want to keep going for no, an hour. No, we, we really need to don't. stop. We need to mention okay, our quit, aprons. Okay, quit, quit. Okay. We, everybody's fallen in love with our, our new aprons. Um, we're Thank working you, with Kara. Leisure Lane Co. has... She's designed and made these. Exactly. It's, they're the most incredible apron I have ever had on. Legit. The, legit. <laughs> We've been looking for an, an amazing Belgian linen. Now, now, if you don't know about Belgian linen, linen let me just Look tell you, cute. it's one of the finest fabrics <laughs> you can buy in the world. She imports it from Belgium. Then it ships to our country, then she has it dyed, and then she designs and makes. We're going to be working with her. These, are, we're going to have our logo just like this, our new logo put on these. You guys are so cute. That I'm They're so, so fun. In love. They're I'm, so fun. We're so in love. Uh, with the but oh, you the need linen. To, the, it is, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not cheap. Okay, yeah, but you need a way in. If you are obsessed with the black and the gray, or there is these other two linen colors. colors. This one, the beige, is she calls it a natural, but yeah, the natural. And I don't know. This one is, it's fine. It looks like a lighter. A lighter. Color. I love it. I love, I love every it. color. Yeah, I love but every I'm color. I'm just like, which one? We're only gonna sell probably about three. So we, we need to do a vote, but I'm obsessed with the black. I I love black, and I'm obsessed. With and the I'm gray. obsessed with gray. I love these two, but I love them all. So I we'll have to talk all. about it. And But you know what's fun about them is that you feel free. 
You just feel free. Like, like you could wear it as an outfit. Like it was a party. <laughs> <laughs> you could just go around the, like all day and promote the food nanny. Yes. Our new logo, Brenda. Brenda, you knocked it out of the park. Oh, she but did. But we, for some reason, are really feeling the black and the gray. Yeah. So you tell us what you're feeling. But okay, there there we'll all go back through and read all of your comments, but a yeah. lot are loving the natural too. Okay, love the but natural. I love the natural too. But our logo looks incredible. We're so excited about it. You could just wear this all day long. It's so cute. It they're French. It's a French apron, you know, it's, it's that style. And you know how we're into France. <laughs> this it's is more why France it's so, than France. It is. This is why it's so amazing. It's we need so to fun. wear them on our on our France trip. <laughs> yeah, we do. We need to take them for a cooking class. But you but everybody, um, Belgium linen is expensive. Right. I have something that I bought in Germany, a hundred and fifty year old linen. And it's still it's still in amazing condition because linen just wears like iron. Right. It wears like iron. It feels so comfortable. So she has actually already washed her. But hers. it's expensive. And I have already kinda, washed it. Are we going to say the price or no? Um, we're hoping um, they retail for $98, isn't it? Yeah. They retail for $98. Um, we're going to, she's, um, Kara is so kind. She wants our fannies to have them. She's working with us, and we're going to hopefully be able to ship them to you and they sell them fit to you for around size. seventy-five. Yeah, seventy-five. But it These will be fit an investment. every size. They're 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 comfy. This would fit any size. That she said, make sure to think of us curvy girls. Guess what? Oh no, I'm this, curvy too. No, and, this fits and it fits all of us. It fits everybody. That's everybody. the beauty of That's it. The beauty it of it. It fits everybody. It's the perfect design. It really is. Okay, like, we, we we love it. We love it. So we can't get enough. We're excited. Okay, so that's more to come, but it, we finally found the best apron, and I think it was meant to be because our logo is finally the best ever. It's not massive food nanny written across. <laughs> it's it's us, but it's it you know, and you know what I love about it, mom? It's the logo that's you and I. Yeah. It's finally you and I logo. Yeah. Anyways, okay, it we've got to stop. A sister's here. She's gonna kill us. Okay. Ah! Okay. Okay. I'm so sorry. Emily, I'm so sorry. Okay. Okay, everybody. Have a Keep great... Keep cooking. Your family's worth it. Have a wonderful day, and we'll post the hot chocolate right after this. We'll be back on Friday. We'll be back on Friday, but we'll be we'll be here all week. We'll be out and about. Okay. I got, I've got people coming for Kamut all day. Okay, love you. Bye. Bye. Oh, no. Sorry, we Emily. We were going to make it so short.